Greetings, it's the 25th of September 2022 and we're going to check in on Tropical Storm Ian and also take a look at Typhoon Noru. That was Super Typhoon Noru and underwent an insane, insane period of rapid intensification in this video. Let's start with Noru. This is the information that I have on Noru and it is worth getting it absolutely spot on. So let me know in the comments if I've got it wrong. But it appears that Noru underwent extreme rapid intensification from 45 knots at the 23rd, on the 23rd of September at 18 UTC to an intensity of 135 knots by 21 UTC on the 24th. So a little over 24 hours, we had a 90 knot increase in winds. Now I'm not sure whether this is a record or not, but it's extreme rapid intensification, no doubt. Noru weakened slightly as it approached landfall, but not enough to prevent a very severe impact where the eye will came ashore. We wait to hear news for the area of central Luzon where it made landfall. Noru has now passed over Luzon and looks like it's emerging into the South China Sea. It's already weakened a huge amount due to land interaction, but you can see the convection blowing up as it enters over the warmer waters again. It's forecast to re-intensify over the South China Sea and head into Vietnam. Here's the JTWC Joint Typhoon Warning Center track and they have it as a category one storm as it's heading into the South China Sea. As it progresses on an almost completely directly westward track, they've got it steadily intensifying to 100 knots major hurricane strength. And it's between 28th at 12 UTC and 27th at 12 UTC. So let's say around 28th at 0 UTC. Now Vietnam is plus seven hours. So we're looking at early morning on the 28th is the landfall predicted time by the JTWC. Let's just check the Hurricane Wharf on that. Okay, here is the Hurricane Wharf emerging the storm. And they, in their conditions actually, they don't even have it as a hurricane strength as it's emerging off the coast. It takes a little bit of time for it to regather hurricane strength. And that's it. When, once you start seeing the purples, that's hurricane strength. And it moves forward towards the Vietnam coast, but the intensification is quite rapid. In fact, I think at this point you will see a couple of wind barbs of over 100 knots as the storm makes landfall. And let's just check that time. So it was plus seven for, yeah, plus seven for Vietnam, plus seven hours, that is from UTC. So we've got landfall at zero UTC that's 7 a.m. Vietnam time on the 28th of September. And certainly the Hurricane Wharf is matching roughly with the JTWC forecast in the sense of intensity, because it has it as a major hurricane strength system at landfall. So a very significant and dangerous storm. And that is a good segue because speaking of significant and dangerous storms, we now move over to Tropical Storm Ian, which it, compared to yesterday is beginning to look quite ominous in the sense that it does have very clear banding around the center. I think it's got less vertical tilt than it had yesterday. Um, it doesn't have a defined eye at this point and it is still classified as a tropical storm at 45 knots but the scene seems to be set now for the development of a significant hurricane. It is slightly different. The forecast is fractionally different from yesterday, a little bit to the west, still tipping into the western end of Cuba, but perhaps, well, at, I think at this point, in, once we head into the Gulf of Mexico, this is highly uncertain. Could be anywhere along this coast. There have been some major changes in the Hurricane Wharf forecast. Check this out. 
so the storm still rapidly intensifies to become a significant hurricane. Again, pretty consistent with yesterday, it clips the western end of Cuba and, and the NHC have shifted their track towards the west that matches the Hurricane Wharf from yesterday a bit, bit more. And then it heads into the Gulf of Mexico, intensifies, becomes the strongest it's going, it, this is its peak intensity and it looks like it's well over 100 knots, 110, maybe some 120 knots in there. But then it approaches, comes up towards Florida, and wow, I mean, it is just weakens rapidly, very rapidly, and stalls in the Hurricane Wharf, and is essentially nothing by the time it gets to landfall. Now, of course, we need to be very careful with this type of simulation, but what it's showing is the impacts of vertical wind shear and it appears that the storm is getting sheared apart in the Hurricane Wharf before making landfall. But don't get too hopeful about that Hurricane Wharf forecast because the European Center model still has the storm going a little bit to the east over Cuba and then hanging in towards central Florida. That has shifted slightly to the north but it is still quite significantly different. Not only that, it is because it makes landfall earlier and further up the coast, it is just avoiding that bit of wind shear for longer. So this is really a nightmare forecast for the National Hurricane Center between the sheared storm into the Panhandle and the intense storm into central Florida. And on that bombshell, I'm going to wrap it up. See you in the next one.